You think it's murder? I mean, clearly it's murder. What can I do to help? Yeah, that's me. February, I mean, that was months ago. What's that got to do with Simon's murder? I didn't murder Simon. You've got it wrong. You've got the wrong person. I'd like to speak to a lawyer now. You have no murder weapon. You have nothing. And all these stories we've been telling each other, just that. Stories. Yes, we'd fight. We fought on the beach once and I held Eve's head underwater. There was no one else around. It was at the far end of the beach. And I held her head under and I kept it out. And for a moment, I just wanted to kill her and watch her drown. But that was it. It was just a moment. We were made up afterwards. It was a love-hate relationship. I'm not sure where the dollhouse came from. I don't know if it was given to them or they inherited it. I mean, they wouldn't have had the money to buy it. It was so huge. <laughs> it must have been taken up to the attic in parts and then reassembled up there. It's a beautiful thing. Wallpaper to scale. Little furniture. The lights work. Mirrors, beds. Big duvets and pillows. We spent hours and hours playing in it. We invented all these characters and families who lived there. We wrote paperwork from them all. Passports, diaries, we gave them all really elaborate stories. Once a moth got trapped in there, we'd left a light on. It was making the most horrendous noise. We tried to kill it, but it was tough. We ended up crushing it under a copy of the Arabian Nights. I mean, what if 
they were crazy. You hear about these crazy people all the time. I mean, why would anyone who knew Simon want to kill him? What did your wife do? She didn't kill you. You think I killed Simon because he was having an affair? Well, I didn't kill him. I wasn't even there. I was in Glasgow worrying about whether my baby was still growing inside me. I mean, why would I kill Simon? I loved him! Simon, Simon Smith. He works at Ernst Brothers Glass. They do windows, all kinds of glass. Simon does the more special work, mirror making, feature windows, artistic things, really beautiful things. Um, Simon is six foot, darkish blonde hair, average build, He's clean shaven. If his beard grows, it goes ginger, so he shaves it. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with ginger hair. Uh, and bought a photo instead of a spring photo. This was taken last year on holiday in Rome. It's the best one I have. It's the Rockington Arms, the rock. It's run by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. There's some other regulars there that Simon likes to drink with. And the barmaid they're having sometimes, Helen. Peter said Simon had been in and had a few drinks. It's the Rockington Arms, The Rock. It's run by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. There's some other regulars there that Simon likes to drink with. And the barmaid they're having sometimes, Helen. Peter said Simon had been in and had a few drinks. Yes, there's an Amstrad one. No one uses it for very much. There's a printer so you can write letters on it. Simon sometimes plays games, you know, climb the tower, save the princess, that kind of thing. Simon isn't the type to run off or do anything crazy. Someone must have done something to him or there must have been some kind of accident. So what do we do next? Well, my friend Eve. I mean, she was a friend from when I was a kid. And she was always more popular with the boys, and I used to hate her for it. I mean, really hate her sometimes. A police station. Yeah, when I was young, we ran away on my birthday. Bob Dylan was playing in London, and we thought we could break into his tour bus and have him take us with him. The taxi driver we paid to drop us off. I mean, we'd saved money, pinched a bit here and there to pay for the fare. He was suspicious because we were so young, so he told the police. So they came and picked us up and took me back to Portsmouth. My mum picked me up from the station. But I blamed everything on my friend Eve. So my parents let me off.
It's the Rockington Arms, The Rock. It's run by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. H-A-N-N-A-H. -N it's Palindre. It reads the same backwards as forwards. It doesn't work if you mirror it, though. It's not quite symmetrical, but well, I mean, you get the idea. Sorry. Hannah Smith, I live at 31 Gladstone Street. Yes, my name is Hannah Smith. Oh, shit. Sorry. Across the road, where my parents first lived there, was a midwife called Florence. When Hannah was born, I was born at the same time. The midwife was there to help. I'd been throttled by the cord probably wrapped around my neck by Hannah. The midwife told my mother I was dead. But I wasn't. She wrote all this stuff in a diary. Amazing what people will admit to on paper. She recognised me from the window. She told me to come inside and she hid me. They had made the attic into a place where Hannah could play. There was a dollhouse. She hid me up there. No one else ever went into the attic. It was her place. Rockington Arms, The Rock. It's run by <laughs> So, it was Friday evening. We had an argument. He left. On Saturday, he didn't come back. I waited all day. He was supposed to go help Eric out with something on the Saturday afternoon. They had a job, but he didn't show. So Eric was ringing on the phone. I checked at The Rock, that's our local. They said they'd seen him on the Friday night, but not since. He still wasn't back this morning. It just isn't like him at all. Still not back by dinner time. It's getting dark again. So I decided to come see you. His parents haven't heard anything either. I don't know. I mean, I guess
guess the rock? We've spoken to everyone there. Someone must have seen where he went. I don't know. So many things could have gone wrong. No, no one has been in the last few weeks. We had a plumber come in three, four weeks ago. Someone sang with you from the rock. No. I think he spoke to Helen. She said he was upset about her argument, but I'm not sure what else he said. He likes Helen. He likes blondes. He's married couple stuff. A stupid argument, nothing specific. No one knows how to push your buttons better than those you're close to. No. I mean, yes, we have arguments, but he never runs off. He always comes back, we make up. It's always that way. Yes, he left after the argument. It was about eight o'clock. Both our parents had a big powwow. We weren't even in the room. And they decided we should get married. No. I lost the baby. I had a miscarriage at eight months. We carried on living at Simon's parents until that was only a few months after. It was the worst year of my life. The miscarriage and then my parents. Yes, I inherited it from my parents so it made sense to move back, me and Simon. Felt like going back to old ways before the pregnancy. Reminded me of being a girl, a dollhouse in the attic, old things. We didn't sleep in my parents' bedroom for a long time. We decorated it as soon as we moved in, but it was another year before we started sleeping there. I think when I drove back, it was about Eight or something. 
And I got back to the house about three. Three. Mm. Back eight years back. It was a present to myself. I shouldn't even be drinking coffee with the baby. It's been hard trying to give it up. I think they say you can have one cup. Um, when I was eight, mother died. She slipped down the stairs. It was an accident. I had read a diary at that point and I knew she wasn't my real mother. So I burned the diary that day and I left. Walked out and across the street. So, I mean, to get into our garden, we'd have to climb through other gardens. All the gardens back onto each other, so you'd have to climb over one, two, three gardens to get to ours. I mean, did anyone see anything? Did anyone see anyone come and go? An intruder? I think it was that time, the first time, at the house, in his bed, that I got pregnant. <laughs> Amazing, right? This fucking magic spell. And they say lightning doesn't strike twice. <laughs> I didn't tell him. I missed three periods. I had pretty irregular periods anyway, but Three. I had always thought we were infertile. Both of us. I didn't tell him. I just waited. So Hannah and I were meeting for our birthday and I told her because I thought she would be happy for us both. I think she was. Like I said before, it was three, something like that. I walked in, saw Simon. He was on the floor of the living room. His throat had been cut. There was a lot of blood. Instead, Yes, I'm fine. I won't be sick again. This happened some days. I'm pregnant. This morning sickness.
I told him I was pregnant. It's Rapunzel. The story starts when she's born. Mother Gothel, a witch, takes Rapunzel from her parents and keeps her locked up in this tower. Rapunzel gets pregnant by the prince, and Mother Gothel is furious, so she cuts off her hair and throws it. Actually, her hair's already short here, so that's already happened. But she throws her into the wilderness, and Rapunzel is reunited with the prince, who's blind, but she kills him with her tears and so it's a happy ending. <laughs> Is that too much? When I arrived in Glasgow, I was exhausted. The streets were empty. I was driving badly. And I hit a taxi. Not a big crash, just paint work. The guy was so pissed off because I didn't have a driving license on me. But when I told him I was pregnant, he made sure I got to the hospital so they could check me out. It was fine. The hospital must have details when I was looked at. There's a scratch on the car. my thing. I've kept one, well, as long as I can remember, since I was a girl. It helps make sense of my day. And when you're forced to put something into words, it just gives you perspective. Everyone's on the same page. Florence was a warm, kind person. But she was broken, I guess. When I found her diary, I also found a biscuit tin with other stuff in it. All the papers, letters, that kind of thing. Her story was in there. I never really spoke to her about it. I was far too young to really understand. I guess I just put it together later, once I was older. She had loved children, planned to have a large family, but her husband died in the war. And that was back when you married for life. She never felt like she could marry again. Isn't that strange? She was a widow from her twenties. But, I mean, I guess it was different then. Married for life, and she felt she could never marry again. I guess it was harder, a war widow. One of the dead. I'm, I don't know, maybe there was more to it than that. I don't really know. It just became my way of life. We would swap places and take it in turns to do things. And we were very careful. Whoever had been out that day would come back and write a detailed diary so that we were on the same page. We had a list of rules that said what we could and couldn't do in any given situation. It was exhaustive. We lived a second life through those rules. Rules for things that could only ever happen inside our imaginations. We would consider all the permutations of future events and agree rules to walk our way through them.
There's a girl and she's staring out of the window. She's sad. She's trapped. She's here. She's looking out the window because her mother won't let her out. I would have been a good mother. I was young, but I would have been a good mother. She was a girl, by the way, the baby. We were going to call her Sarah. Simon wanted to call her Ava after his nana, but I didn't want her to have a symmetrical name. I would have been a good mother. She we were going to Simon wanted to call her Ava after. Well, she wasn't my real mother, but she raised me. Do you want to hear the story? It's a real life fairy tale. <laughs> we spent the wedding night in a hotel in Brighton. It would have been too much to do more. We were saving for the baby. It was wonderful to be in a hotel, away from home, just alone together. Since then, we've always tried to get away for our holiday. We spent the wedding night in a hotel in Brighton. It would have been too much to do more. We were saving for the baby. We couldn't afford our own place. Simon dropped out of school, went full-time at the Glaziers. That was Eric's generosity. We moved in with his mum and dad. They had a spare room for us and the baby, if it came. It was a nice change, time to myself, living there for those months, full of hope. It was after dinner. I had spoken to Simon's parents on the phone. I looked up for an early night and I suddenly had this thought. I think it was something his mother had said. She'd been speaking about old stuff, sad stuff, about when we lived there, about the baby. There's some boxes in the cellar, nursery stuff, stuff we never needed. And I never had the heart to throw out. And I suddenly remembered that when I'd looked down there the week before, those boxes, that pile, was in the wrong place. I went cold all over. I went down there with a the torch and went straight to the back. And that's when I saw the bin bags. Pulled them open saw the body. I screamed and that's when I called the police. Yes. It was a shock to him. I mean, we never thought it was possible. I don't know what he... I mean, I hadn't decided whether to keep the baby. I wasn't really ready to talk to him about it. Ask the hospital. I don't see how it's hard. 
We've established I was in Glasgow when he was killed. We spoke with the hospital. When I arrived in Glasgow, I was exhausted. The streets were empty. I was driving badly. Yes, that's my birthday. Not one of the big ones, but I guess you can see that. It was my birthday, like you said. We were going to have a meal at home. We had our meal. He gave me his present. I guess I didn't like the present. From when I woke up. Okay. I, uh, I woke up. Simon was already up and he made me birthday breakfast of eggs benedict. Uh, we both had to go to work so we saved presents till later. Um, I got to work, had some birthday cake, children sang me happy birthday, then I came home. The birthday meal was a takeaway um, and Simon gave me his present which I didn't mind. And after that, we talked about the baby. It turned into a big argument. Simon left. I was furious. I wanted to get as far away as I could and get some space to think. So I left. Mm. Mm. A week or so ago, it would have been the Saturday before my birthday. You know, I get like that on the weekends, have a lie in, then want to get up and blitz the house. <laughs> it wasn't the present so much. It was one of those arguments that had been simmering for a while. The present was a mirror, a nice mirror. He didn't grade the glass, the kind of mirror a princess would have in a story. He made it specially for me. Her story is that she'd waited for him to come back. She put on my wig, some of my clothes, pretended to be me. They talked. She'd enjoyed being me. He said he wanted to be with me. Then he took out a present, another mirror, just like the one he'd given her earlier. <laughs> that unique present. She went crazy, smashed the mirror. They argued, screamed, he hit her. So she grabbed a piece of the mirror and just swung it round. She cut his throat clean open. She'd only meant to scare him off. The mirror. I can't remember. I put it somewhere safe. Upstairs, I think. I haven't looked at it since. Silver leaf? No. He normally silvers them properly. This mirror, it's supposed to look antique. The reflection isn't as good. It's the perfect mirror for someone who doesn't like to look at their own reflection. You want me to play something? Well, I'm 
not the world's greatest guitar player. Okay? Probably needs tuning. No. It's okay. How about a traditional ballad? It should be right up your street. When she went home, Simon had a birthday tea waiting. Afterwards, she told Simon about me, told him I was pregnant. She wanted me to move in with them, this sister he didn't know she had. She knew that instant. The look on his face. She sent him out the house, kicked him out, <laughs> called me up, crying, and I went round. I guess I had a feeling I could hear something was wrong in her voice, but I wasn't sure what it was. She called me sister on the phone. She never calls me that. She sent him out the house, kicked him out. My sister is gone, and she's never coming back. My sister is gone, and she's never coming back. your mind. Twins. Florence took me home with her. 
mother hadn't been expecting twins and had a healthy baby. I guess she was just happy for Florence to clean up. Take away the evidence that this was anything but a happy occasion. There were always princes and princesses. They were the special people, more important than the other characters in their stories. We knew we were like that. Twins, magical. We were the princesses. We had a poster of Princess Diana from the newspaper up in our attic. I had a pride of place. And underneath we used to put all our special things. When her engagement was announced, we were obsessed with everything she did. And later, when her life went so bad, we felt for her. Her divorce last year just kind of drew a line under things. Do you need to take a few records? <laughs> Nothing like this has ever happened to me before. The blood. It's probably the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Fine, considering. I got back into the house today, and that was weird, knowing your people had been there through my things. It's like I'd been burgled. I mean, worse, obviously. I don't know. I haven't lived in the cellar yet. They sent a cleaner in, as good as new, he said. But they had to throw some stuff out couldn't get the blood out. And I'm still waiting to hear from the coroner so we can get a date set for the funeral. It's going to be a cremation. So... She was sat behind him. She had my wig on. She'd been there all day. And she had blood on her. And she was in shock. Gone to bed feeling ill, thinking it was flu or something. The neighbour called me, I had to use my key to let them in. We found them dead in their bed. And they'd been there for days, no one had noticed. Just awful. It was so soon after my miscarriage, in the worst year of my life, I'd been so happy to get married, and after that, it was just like, fuck. That's all that matters really, the baby. Simon's dead, but the baby, that's how he will live on. Our baby. You're reaching here. 
and I don't know why. No, I've never cheated on anyone. I've never taken anything from anyone. Simon is dead. But I have my baby to care for. Why are you trying to make me sad? Why are you so obsessed with sex and affairs? You cheated on your wife. Is this your thing? It was supposed to be a secret. Just because Simon is dead, it doesn't mean I have to give up all his secrets. It doesn't have anything to do with what happened to Simon. No one murdered my husband because he cheated his expenses for a romantic weekend in Oxford. Rehearsed? You ask me the same question, you'll get the same answer. Is that your evidence? Of course I thought about what happened then. It's all I've thought about. My husband is dead. his throat. How? His body. It did not real. And his throat. It looked like his throat had been cut. And I didn't see his glasses, he has these thick glasses. It doesn't always work. Bruise. I have a really fast metabolism, so stuff like that just comes and goes. I don't know if there's much more that I can tell you, but I haven't already told the other policemen. I found the body. I. the rest. Yes, the only tune 
that the field could play all the truthful Anything you sing may be used as evidence against you. Can you imagine? I tried. I tried to get pregnant too, but it didn't happen. I slept with so many boys, men. My body refused. I think my period stopped because hers had. I was pretty ill. I mean, how could we stay the same now? I felt like Hannah had really fucked things up. Set us down separate paths. We had become different. An affair. Simon wasn't having an affair. <laughs> Mum and Dad never knew what was going on. We got so good at it. We were so in sync that we'd use each other to cheat. If one of us had a hangover, the other one would go to school. Whoever was best at a subject would sit the exam. There were lots of differences between us. Some things one is better than the other at. Um, I hoover my dust every week, maybe less. I once asked Eleanor how often I should dust and she said, if people ask, tell them you do it once a week, but every few weeks it's okay. I think she was just trying to make me feel better. I mean, when I was there she was hoovering every day in a ran and ordered house. You know how that generation is, putting on a brave front. Hmm. She has secret stashes of cigarettes. Doug doesn't even know she smokes. When I was there, I saw her. She has these sort of porcelain vases, ornamental, next to the Reader's Digest books. Cigarettes inside. And she still has them. I mean, last time I was there, I looked in a vase. There was a fresh pack. I mean, all those years of marriage, and she still has a secret like that. So, our sex life is probably fairly average for a couple after 10 years of marriage. Simon was very moral about that sort of thing. He wouldn't just walk out there and sleep with anyone. He wasn't that kind of guy. He took his marriage very seriously. After the kiss, the next time, he took me back to the house, to our parents' house, to their house. So, it was definitely him. I sometimes think he wanted to get caught to prove to himself that we were different people. He told me about his marriage, told me how his wife was completely different to me. <laughs> I almost burst out laughing. I 
I've been into work. I've been, I mean, I guess I've just been waiting, waiting to hear from you, hear from my husband. When you suspect someone of murdering their husband. She's crying, I guess. She's sad because she thought she saw her husband with another woman. But it's okay because she finds out it wasn't her husband, it was his brother. And so it's fine. I thought it made me sound suspicious. It's not a normal thing to do, to drive to the other end of the country. I just, I wanted to keep it simple. I know it was stupid not to tell you everything. Saying I spent the night in Glasgow when my husband went missing, I thought it would, you know, distract you from what was important. It's different now. Now he's... Well, Eric was like an uncle to him. They were pretty close. They spend a lot of time with each other, especially when they have to go to conferences. Have you met his wife, Diane? Well, she has a knife. But uh, um, she's been cooking, I guess. She's been cooking him his favourite meal. Um, she's his wife. And he's asleep and she doesn't want to wake him because he's ill. That's why she's sad. Because he's ill and he might die. Kind of a sad story, so I'm not sure how it ends. <laughs> really? You're going to ask me about my sex life? I mean, isn't that private? Are you married? How is your sex life? No! You're talking to the wrong person if you think I'm some kind of slut. If you think I'm the kind of person that would have had sex with all those guys. No. Um, I was 15. Carl was older. 17, I think. I was really into him, regardless of how he actually behaved. Lots of drunken teenage sex. We did it in a church once. It's stupid. So he got tired of us and we split up after about six months. It was sad, but those early experiences, they help you realize who's really important to you, you know? Family. <laughs> Not really. He would go to the pub. He had his drinking buddies there, but no one ever really came back to the house. Sometimes Eric, his boss, and his wife would come over for dinner. That would be us returning the favour. Diane is a really good cook, into her trendy ingredients. And the last time Simon cooked something off Master Chef, he got the recipe off Seafax, and I did my Lloyd Grossman bit, commenting from the sidelines. I had to find fennel from the supermarket. Have you ever eaten fennel? Yeah, 
when I was at school. I worked part-time in the front shop. It was sort of an extended family thing. My dad used to work there, my mom worked there before I was born. I took care of paperwork, filing, typing out invoices, that kind of thing. And it was a good job for a girl back then. I didn't work a till or anything, but I was quite shy, so I wouldn't have liked to have worked a till. Family. So, Carl fucked off, and then there were other boys here and there, and then Simon. No, it was just me and her. It was the name they were going to call their first child. They talked about it. And I'm going to try when he came back. Florence's family had a history of first-born girls, so they were convinced it was going to be a girl. It's hard to know if this is all true. These are stories I remember that I read when I was a child. Maybe I misread, maybe I misunderstood. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to remember what happened last week. Sorry, sorry. The picture, the way it's drawn, just reminded me of the books we used to read as children. I read those fairy tales over and over, and they were so real to me. Rapunzel was my favourite. My brain is just full of it. Oh, and you're in colour. Did I pass? Sorry, I messed it up with all that Rapunzel stuff. Do you need me to do that card again? Could the hairs have come from somewhere else? I mean, could they... We have a lot of dolls in the attic. There's a Rapunzel doll with long blonde hair. Could they have come from there? We were obsessed with fairy tales. Not just the pretty, pretty ones, but the traditional ones. They were dark and real, bizarre and violent. Felt like life. We had this huge old book that I think Mum must have bought from a library sale. The illustrations had thin tracing paper over them to protect them. They were in colour, shiny plates. At the front of the book, was an index of illustrations. We read that more than the actual stories. We'd read aloud the captions and flip between the pictures. There was something intimate about peeling back the tracing paper and dressing the pictures. Rapunzel's hair is cut. The eagle plucks out his heart. The princess pricks her finger. Yes. I drove in here because I remember well I went over the river and then there was a church there. Yeah. And I probably part well I remember seeing a street sign called Princess Street. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it must be this one. There. Yeah, we were 17. It was a nice wedding, people said. Simon looked very handsome in the photos. His parents paid for everything, but he's an only child, so it was important to them. It was what they called a shotgun wedding, but if you looked at the photos, you couldn't tell. 
the dress was beautiful. It looked like Princess Diana's. <laughs> the training wasn't quite as long though. There's a great photo of the bridesmaid helping to carry it out of the car. <laughs> Yes.